Flight of the Cruise Wing presents the how and why one of our modifications nearly resulted in disaster and how we repaired holes in our camper roof. So, sometimes life on the road isn't perfect. Uh, when we purchased our EPRO FD19 in June of 2021 from a dealership at Wichita Falls, Texas, it was supposed to have a ProRack roof rack system installed by the factory. When we picked up the trailer from the dealership that June, we noticed that it did not have the roof rack system on the trailer. It had the removable ladder on the back, but not the roof rack itself. The dealer contacted Forest River about the omission of the roof rack, and they were told that it was a supply chain issue and they could not get the parts. So the dealer told us that once they got the parts, we could have the roof rack installed as a warranty repair. Fast forward to June of 2022. One year later, our dealer, after several attempts to contact, finally got with us and they told us that they had the parts. So we dropped our trailer off and had the roof rack installed. Fast forward one more time. It's now March of 2023. We have not used a roof rack, but we plan to. And we released a video, specifically part three of our 14 modifications series. In that video, modification 14 was detailing how we plan to use a roof rack for extra storage while we traveled. What follows is what we've discovered since that video was published. 14 more modifications. Let's go. Part three, three. <laughs> 14. Outside rooftop storage. Since our trailer did not come with a bumper, there's no place to put a storage box. But we thought, hey, we've got a rack on the roof. After editing and publishing the video, I decided it was time to actually put something in the box. So I carried a bunch of stuff up on top of the trailer and opened up the box. And as I was putting the items in the box, I looked down at the base of the rack and what did I see? I saw roof membrane all bubbled up around the base. So I checked the other three bases, same thing. And I said to myself, self, this can't be good. That means I probably got a water leak. Right. Crap. This is the way the pro rack comes off. Pulls out. So then I thought, ready. all I need to do is take off the rack, yes. and then I will seal it better, and everything will be cool. It Let's wasn't cool. There. It's bubbled, very bubbled there. You can see here where this has gotten wet here. So apparently, you see there, the crappy silicone they use here very well and it's leaking around it. And there might be a cut there. No, it's not. We have since learned that uh, silicone is not the recommended material to seal this. The first bracket I examined actually seemed like it was pretty well attached, though it did have signs of water intrusion. And this is what the back one looks like. The second one was so loose that I could actually wiggle it with my fingers. Definitely not cool. I've been able to back all those screws out just with my fingers. This was the hardware after I removed it, not counting the pop rivets. Something definitely didn't seem right, so we did some online research. We didn't find much, but we did find this online brochure detailing the Pro Rack. Our Pro Rack has a sticker on it that says it can hold 150 pounds. I don't think it can hold 150 helium balloons. So our next question, where should it be attached? The roof of the E-Pro, according to brochure, is made up of layers. It has a roof membrane over top of a wood substrate. The wood substrate lies over top of a vaulted aluminum frame. 
which has its voids filled in with thick styrofoam insulation. Underneath that, of course, is the ceiling layer that you can see from the inside. You can see where it's stained a different color. I think that is where the actual roof spar is that it should have been attached to. And you can just barely see where it's stained here a different color. The two front brackets are attached to this. The one attached with uh, pop rivets actually seems pretty sturdy. This one attached with machine screws was okay, but not great. WTF? What the heck? Brackets you can wiggle with your fingers? Our boxes would have fell off in the, the very first time we hit the interstate. Loose yeah, the membrane's loose. Where water got up underneath it. It was sealed with silicone. It was sealed with silicone. They didn't even like put good stuff on it. They didn't even use the stuff that you're supposed to use with this kind of roof. Cheap ass silicone. So now we gotta take the rack off and we can't put our boxes up here, so. And we got leaks to fix. Yes, so I would not recommend this modification. Not as advertised. This bracket's on a spar. This bracket's not on a spar. The spar is here. After this unsettling discovery, James had to seek the help of an emotional support animal. Houdain is a little dinosaur shit. Thanks, Houdain. Since we discovered the issue, Elizabeth has been in contact with Forest River. And after review of photographs, the representative of Forest River informed us that the roof rack was installed incorrectly and possibly even the wrong roof rack. Uh, he also supplied us with a PDF uh, instruction sheet that they send to the dealerships on how to install the roof rack correctly. According to the installation pamphlet, the roof rack is supposed to be mounted on extension brackets and those are supposed to be mounted to the ridge line and all the way out to the edge of the roof. It also details how to properly waterproof the whole thing. Apparently, on our installation, there were a whole lot of parts that should have been used that weren't. Okay, so, um, after a few emails, uh, our RV dealer got back with us and their service manager apologized for the shoddy installation service manager said they were looking into how the mistake happened and they were going to make sure that it never happened again and they have decided that they are going to refund us not only the cost of the rack but also the purchase price of the materials to repair the roof so for us that's the best possible outcome we could have hoped for um so Thank you, Foundation RV. You're good people. In the meantime, with all the hardware removed from the roof, Elizabeth could begin the repairs. The first step was to remove any accumulated grime and mildew to make sure that there was a complete adhesion of the products I would be using. cleaner that I got at an RV store to clean the spot. Hard to see because the shadows. Looks pretty good. Put the water. All that. So this is what I'm going to use for the initial pack. It's a uh, Roof Quick Extreme White um, Instant Self Adhesive Roof Repair. It's actually a type of tape. It's supposed to be very sticky. It needs to go two inches on all sides of the hole and then it'll be sealed around the edge with Dicor Self Leveling Lap Sealant. We'll see how that goes. 
see how this goes. Alright, use my tricky box cutter knife and board. And I now have four patches. See how hard this is going to be to apply. I suspect it's going to not be as easy. Proper roller, I had to make do with my Pinkles meat tenderizer. And yesterday I used it to make pork cutlets, and today I use it to repair the holes in the roof. After the patches were applied, I sealed around each of them with a layer of the lap sealant to make sure that there was no gaps. Here's the repair. See, it's leveling. I'll go up and inspect it later and make sure it still looks good. I have another tube of gunk if I need it, so I will use it. I might just use it to add some extra sealing around the other stuff just to be on the safe side. And the whole roof needs clean, but it's too cold today to do that. A few days later, I climbed back up and scrubbed the roof clean as best as I could. And overall, it looks pretty good. Um, I think it's not going to leak at this point, at least not from where I repaired. And uh, we'll see. If you have a pro rack system installed on your RV or trailer, we recommend that you go up on your roof and check the installation because if it's not done right, you could have a bad day. And in case this video has you stressed out, like the whole affair has me stressed out, here's a palate cleanser of Charlie eating noodles. <coughs> If you like this video, please check out our <laughs> channel and playlist. And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need